Today, I'm taking this Amtrak sleeper train for 35 hours up the west coast of America. Join me and experience exactly what it's like overnight in my private ensuite bedroom. And yes, I even have my own shower. You'll find out what day to day life is like on a long haul rail journey, from eating steak in the dining car to exploring other classes. That means heading to the tail. Naturally, we'll hang out in the viewing lounge, witnessing oceans, great cities, and forests to name a few. Oh, and I'd just like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Right then, I hope you're sitting comfortably. It's time to head to California to start our epic journey to the north. Hello there and welcome to Los Angeles at Union Station where we're going to be picking up our journey today all the way up to Seattle. LA's Union Station is a stunning combination of Art Deco and Mission Revival architecture designed way back in the 1930s by John and Donald Parkinson. As I head to grab my tickets, you'll note the surroundings change to a more 1990s refit kind of vibe. This is, however, the least of my worries as we've just struck our first issue of the trip. I've missed my bag check. A few moments later. Typical, it turns out I'm just one minute late to check my bag. However, all is not lost. My bag will be put on another train free of charge. Find out later if I ever see this again. Right, with that sorted, let's head to platform 10 and go get on board today's train, the Coast Starlight. Well, here we go. Welcome to room E. Room E is located on the upper level of the sleeper car, along with four other rooms and 10 roomettes per carriage. Let's see what it's like. Uh, of course, we're just about to get underway in about 10 minutes, so I'm gonna settle in, and when we're on our way, I'll show you all around. As we slowly glide out of LA Union Station, let me walk you through our first segment of this near 1400 mile trip. Most of today will be following the Pacific coastline. Then this evening we'll dart inland, passing Sacramento around bedtime. Now the difference between this trip and the last trip I was on is the, obviously I'm in a different sleeper car, but also I'm much closer to the engines in fact. I'm the last carriage before you get to the two engine cars. As a result, you can hear the train a lot more. I don't know how much that's gonna impact the experience, but let's see, eh? Oh, much better. Right, the all important caffeine hit that I'll try not to spill all over myself. Well, I think it's about time we take a look around this room and what it's like. So this is the bedroom, which is the largest room that you can get on Amtrak. I say that you can actually, this partition here does actually slide across and allow you to have, I guess you could call it a quad bedroom. But today we're focusing on what I've got here. So where you're gonna spend most of your time is here. Now I'm assuming most people would travel as a couple in the bedrooms. Of course, if you're just on your own, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I'm on my own, but usually speaking, because of the cost element, it would make more sense to share. And yes, fear not, I'll be including all costs in today's video. We'll go through this in just a moment. They're never easy to come out. And this folds out as so. I find them perfect to do work on. It is really fiddly, fiddly as you can see. What is the rest of the cabin like? Now you can see you've actually got space for two more people here. Technically they do say that you can fit three people in here, but realistically you're gonna want two max. You've got a closet which I've used just to stow some of my things. There are various dated control panels throughout your room to operate the lights, tannoy volume, and thankfully individual climate control. This is of course an ensuite room, but your sink is located just outside the loo. I have found this to be a bit strange. I mean, it works, but it makes some very strange noises. Got another power outlet there, which I've used to charge my camera. I'm not sure how safe that is next to the sink, but there we go. One last thing to note, you've got your fresh towels for, uh, for a shower. Talking of which, this is your ensuite, complete with shower. But yes, I will be showing you shortly. Finally, as we round a corner, I'm presented with my first look at the beautiful Pacific coastline, all from the comfort of my bedroom. It's 
not long before we arrive at our first smoke stop of the trip, the coastal city of Santa Barbara. So for those familiar with Amtrak will know that this is what's called a smoke stop, although they've started calling it a fresh air break, which I guess is more PC, and fewer people are supposed to smoke, but traditionally it's a smoke stop, and that's what we're gonna call it. Remember, Amtrak does not hang around, so if you wander too far away, it will leave without you. Oh, wow, that was a, a nice little stretch of the legs. I've got my seating time for lunch. Now, it's included, um, and I've got a couple of menus here to take a look at. Um, so yeah, we'll go through that when we go over to the dining car in, yeah, about 10 minutes time. And just before we indulge in Amtrak dining, it's time for a quick word from today's video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace make it super easy for you to set up and host a website. And no, you don't have to know complicated coding. Squarespace really have this down, handling it all from your domain name through to the design, hosting, social media linking, and even your search engine optimization. The best bit is Squarespace offering you a free trial and 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Just head over to Squarespace squarespace.com forward slash track trendy and use the coupon code track trendy thanks again squarespace for making this video possible right it's time for food dining on these long-haul amtrak trains is a sit-down affair and whilst nowhere near as formal as say the orient express it's still quite the experience in usual times it's the chance to sit with other travelers in fact once upon a time the coast starlight used to operate a special dining service using the historic pacific parlor car complete with wine tasting and champagne. Sadly, the champagne days are long gone, but as you can see, today's lunch boasts a half decent selection. As I order my main, let's sit back and enjoy the coastal and countryside views. There's something most civilized about eating in the dining car on a long train journey. So what have I gone for? Of course, it's got to be the Angus burger, complete with crispy bacon. Most definitely not the healthiest, but the burger was succulent and full of flavor. To continue this gluttonous trend, I select the Philadelphia cheesecake for dessert. I still stand by this being one of the best cheesecakes I've had on my travels. With lunch out of the way and continually being awestruck by the Pacific views, it's time for our next smoke stop. Welcome to San Luis Obispo. <laughs> Dubbed the happiest place in America apparently, famed for its vineyards and historic architecture. It also marks the start of our trip back inland as we head further north. With the Californian landscape continuing to wow by the second, let's head over to the viewing car for a different perspective. There's actually a cafe just below the viewing lounge, so I'll quickly grab a DC before heading back up to relax. This lounge does become quite busy at key times because it's accessible by the entire train. For those brave coach passengers, undertaking these 35 hours in a seat, this space will make all the difference. Thankfully though, I do have the luxury of space on this trip, so let's head back to the privacy of my bedroom. Unfortunately, I do need to get some work done, but I continue to be dazzled by the epic landscape. Can you really beat these office views? Much, much later. With dusk upon us, it's time to head back to the dining car. It's steak night. Let's take a look at the menu then. Of course, as I alluded to, I'm having steak, but for my starter, I think it's time for the return of the tamale. If you've seen my last Amtrak video, you'll know I struggled to eat this. But now I'm a resident tamale expert. Just look at me, tackling this like a pro. Next up, the promised Amtrak signature steak. Yes, it's even cooked to your preference. Okay, it's not a steakhouse, but it sure beats the many airline steaks I've had before. And for this evening's finale, the chocolate tort. Rich, moist, and frankly delicious. This is my go-to Amtrak dessert. Well, 
I think it's bedtime. I am a little concerned about this continuous horn being blown, but um, I guess that's just part and parcel of being on a moving train going through multiple level crossings. Anyway, I was trying to work out how to set this up myself, but I had to ask for some help. I always feel a bit awkward asking someone for help with, you know, putting the bed out, but I guess that's the point of a sleeping tent, isn't it? It's to put the bed out for you. So this bedding here, this mattress, is actually stowed up here. As you can see, this is a mattress. Here's the two seats underneath that have just folded flat. I've got a blanket as well, and I've got some pillows that I'm gonna pop over. PJ wise, obviously you don't get given PJs, that's not something I was expecting, um, but I have brought my own camo trackies, but of course, I've got to be on brand, haven't I now? A few moments later. Nice and comfy. Now, there is a slight change of plan. Apparently, we're just about to get to Oakland because it's going to be the last smoke stop of the evening. I thought I'd drop out and get some fresh air just before sleep. With my teeth brushed and back on the move again, it's finally time to get into bed. Catch you in the morning. The next day. Well, here we go. This is the ensuite bathroom. I say bathroom, um, <laughs> it's essentially a toilet come shower and there's not a huge amount of room. So this is gonna be very entertaining at my expense. A few minutes later. Well, I will say it's decent. This is the best shower I've had on the train. It's powerful, it's warm, it's not like the Caledonia Express where it's like spurting out water. It's just like a hotel. Feeling a million bucks, let's get my clothes back on, slip my socks on, and of course not forget the Tims. I make it brekkie time. Past my old friends the roomettes. Breakfast on Amtrak is great, and again included in my ticket price. First things first, I need some caffeine. No coffee machine to speak of, but a strong filter coffee will do the trick. So, day two, what does it have in store? We'll continue heading north through the mountains and forests, as we've just crossed into Oregon, and then we'll make our way up to Seattle. Back to food. I've chosen the railroad French toast. Again, not healthy, so I'll pay for this on the treadmill once I'm home. The French toast is fluffy, bursting with flavour and overall just stellar. I closed with an apple juice. Got to get that five a day in, right? Okay, let's head over to the viewing car to finish off this coffee. It's rather full in here already, but it's just dawned on me most of these passengers are from coach, so likely have had pretty broken sleep. Let's settle in and watch the world go by. It's certainly a beautiful morning for it. Mind you, it's not long before we reach our first stop of the day, so let's head back to my room, as I'm eager for some fresh air. Well, here we are then, back in the room. And whilst I've been at breakfast, my sleeping car attendant has turned my room back into the day use. Coming up on our first stop in Oregon, I don't have a coat with me, and it's minus two outside. I'll put the conversion to my lovely American friends. The only thing I've got is a hat. Continue to laugh at William's expense. <music> Good morning, cold and brisk Oregon. The unique thing about this station here is that it's got exposed railway, something we'd never see in the UK. Naturally, we've got to head to the front of the train, but I'm distracted by the freight trains and the age old mystery. 
Legend has it freight trains get priority over Amtrak, hence the notorious delays. However, just as many people who have told me this have also told me it's rubbish. Do settle it down in the comments below because I'm genuinely not sure. As we glide out of Klama Falls and I risk the tap again to brush my teeth, it's actually getting comical at this point. <laughs> the next leg of our trip is arguably as if not more beautiful than the Pacific coastline. No doubt this is how the Coast Starlight is one of the most scenic train routes in the world. We'll be heading through lush forests before entering and passing through the Cascade Mountain Range. It's incredible to me being able to sit back and enjoy my morning coffee watching these incredible scenes pass by my window. As promised, I wanted to show you one of the other classes of travel. This is business class. Unlike economy, they do get access to the dining car at a charge, but again, you have to be prepared to sleep in a recliner for 30 plus hours, not for the faint hearted. After perhaps the most scenic morning of my life, we arrive into Portland, which is uh, quite the contrast. There is, however, time to get off the train here and stretch my legs, which is most appreciated. So, welcome to Portland. This is actually an extended stop. So I've got about 15 minutes, so I'm going to very riskily walk a little bit further away from the train just because I think it would be quite interesting to see well, a little bit of the station, but somewhere I've never been before. This is Portland Union Station, opened originally in 1896, but rebuilt far more recently in 1996. It's a beautiful building and certainly one I'm glad I took the risk to go poke about in. Anyway, saying this, I probably should be heading back to the train. It does go in five. So dinner is here. One of the things that's really cool is that you can get room service. So I thought, do you know what? For a little change of scenery and so I'm not in a packed dining room, I thought it'd be cool to see what it's like eating in your room, how it's delivered, etc. So let's see what it's like. By now you should be familiar with the menu as this doesn't change daily. Naturally, we're gonna start with a DC. And next, of course, I've got to get my level 100 tamale skills on the go again. I think it's time for main course. Here we go. So I have gone for the tortellini with pesto cream. You see, I also do vegetarian options on this channel. This was delicious and I'll certainly choose it again. For dessert, well, there's no competition. The chocolate tour is top tier stuff. Now I really need to learn how to make this back home in the UK. So it's that part of the trip where you get to have a laugh at me. Well, you probably have already to be fair. What I'm gonna do, it's a tradition if you haven't seen my videos, is for me to attempt to get in the top bunk and give my opinion on whether I could sleep there or not. Obviously when you've got the option of up or down, I mean I don't know about you, but I'll go for the bottom bunk because I find it more comfortable. So let's see what the Amtrak bedroom top bunk is like. So I guess it's time to get up. There we go. Um, what's it like? Do you know what? It's not too bad. As with the uh, roomette, it's comfortable enough. It's obviously a lot more narrow than the bed below. The bed below is not quite a double. It's more like a two third bed. This is very much a single, a very narrow single. Would I sleep up here? Yes, I would, but I would much prefer down below. So if you pull the short straw and sleep up here, it's not that bad, but I'd certainly prefer sleeping down. Well, there we go. The upper bunk, hilarious I know. I am not the most elegant of people, but what do you think? Let me know which one you'd prefer down in the comments below. As we trundle along the last few miles of this journey, what did this actually cost me? Well, it's certainly not cheap. I found, as with my last Amtrak ticket, booking within a week of departure, the price dropped, but this still cost me a whopping $1,216. 
Yes, all my meals were included, but that's quite the price for just one night and two days. Well, Room, you've done me well. You got me all the way from LA. Let's get off. Thank you so much. Well, there you have it. Welcome to Seattle. What a long, long journey, and I know I could have done it on a plane in, what, two and a half hours, but we're here. I'm gonna go and get my bags and call that a wrap. Thank you so much for joining me on this epic adventure. I hope you've enjoyed coming along for the ride. Let me know, as always, what you thought in the comments below, and I'll catch you all again next week. Oh, and in case you wondered, yes, my bag did miraculously arrive in Seattle the same time as me. I guess I should give Amtrak more credit, as many airlines would certainly have lost that. Thanks once again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash trendy to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.